Okay, so welcome, my name is Sumner. Today is day 16 of Advent of Code. We're about four minutes out from the problem opening up. So let me just make sure that everything is ready. Have my day 16 starter code here. Get input for day 16 is ready. Um, and yeah, things are, things are definitely looking up. Um, last night was, was the best I've done in about, well, the last five days. So, um, ended, ended with a, with a reasonable 464. Obviously I would love that to be faster, but I'm just happy I'm no longer spending four hours solving. That was pretty terrible on day 13. And day 11 was pretty atrocious as well. So, um, yeah, yeah, this is, this is definitely the direction I want to go. The keys for me are going to be just, uh, reading, understanding the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's kind of difficult for me. So, so I am trying to follow the Joshua Wise um motto that slow is is smooth and smooth is fast so that's the goal trying not to make stupid mistakes because i'm rushing but also go smooth um not thrash yeah i, I am hoping for a bit longer of a problem today something more algorithmically interesting and, or um you know, something along those lines, you know, it's a blessing and a curse, right? Like if that happens, then, then I probably drop on the leaderboard, uh, because it's harder and I, I, I don't get the insight or, um, but on the other hand, it'll hopefully be more interesting. By the way, thank you to everyone who has followed me on Twitch and subscribed on YouTube. If you haven't um, and you like this content, then you should go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm streaming every evening, so come over and so, uh, follow my channel on Twitch and you'll get a notification for when I go live. So here we go. Ticket fields list. <clears throat> Okay, so this is
let's do this if it The values are the numbers on the ticket in the order they appear. Every ticket has the same format. Consider this ticket. Okay. I start by determining which tickets are completely invalid. These tickets contain values which aren't valid for any field. Ignore your ticket for now. Okay. And for each of the nearby tickets, for each of the field and T, for R and rules.
<laughs> that was good. Okay, so we discard the invalid ones. Okay, order is consistent. Okay, so let's see here. So we have a way of detecting if a, if a ticket is invalid. So if What? Oh, um, for field and ticket, if it is Okay. So these are the rules.
if not that if it's not in this range and not Dang it.
Okay, so... Ah, ah, ah. Just two fifty four. That is amazing. Ah, that felt so good. Okay. Um, wow, that is the best I've done in a long time. That was really smooth. That was super smooth. Um, let's see how. Okay, so I, I did at least beat Colin on part two. I was still a bit slow on part one. But I don't think I'll... I, I can't at this point lose any points on the leader. Um, wow. That went really well. Um, I, I'm not sure... There wasn't much that really went wrong. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's 
I guess let's clean it up a bit. Um, add in my regression test, get rid of this print, that print. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, let's see here. I guess the only thing that really kind of went wrong was the parsing. It was I was a bit slow on that, but I'm not too mad at myself because that was like pretty fast. Um, all right, let's just get rid of uh, a few things here. Let me calm down a bit. I, I liked that problem. I, I really did like that problem a lot, actually. Um, um, that was a that was a fun problem. It had some input parsing. Oh, whoops! I need to keep rematch. Shoot! This is what happens when I delete too many of my utilities. Okay, there we go. And then let's just clean up a bunch of stuff here. Okay. Yeah, that was, looks pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I'm just waiting, hoping that somebody solves before Colin so I can gain at least a single point. I mean, he was... He's going to pretty much always beat me on part one, it seems. Um, it's pretty impressive, to be perfectly honest. So, okay. Um, nothing to do but, but wait for results. Okay, so let's talk about how this works. Um, so first of all... Uh, yeah, let's just, I think it's best just to kind of look at the input and kind of uh, kind of see see how that is working. So um, basically, I don't know why, but you've decided to 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 not use Google Translate to translate your your ticket. And instead, you've decided that it's a good idea to um, do it all by inference. Um, so what sort of inferences need to be made? Well, first of all, you have a bunch of, you've, you've taken a bunch of notes on stuff. So for example, you've noted that the class has to be one between one and three inclusive or between one, five and seven inclusive. The row has to be between six and 11 or 33 to 34 seat, etc. What that means is that um, there's going to be some checks that you can basically do on each of the each of the numbers to determine which which ones are are valid, which tickets are valid, and everything. So let's let's uh, let's explain this. Um, yeah. So first of all, these can be anywhere in the in the um, ticket. So they could be class could be first, or row could be first, seat could be the third um, field of the ticket or the first, it doesn't really matter. You just know that they have to exist somewhere. Um, and the first task is to figure out what's completely invalid. Um, this involves basically going through and seeing like, looking at your nearby tickets and seeing that, for example, four doesn't fit into any of these ranges. So this must not be a valid ticket. Um, at least for your your train, um, and you only consider nearby tickets. Yeah, so based on the nearby tickets. Um, oh shoot, that's part two. Identify invalid nearby tickets by considering whether or not the con con tickets contain values that are valid um, for any field. Or not valid for any field. So, for example, yeah, as I said, the four is invalid for any field. This twelve is invalid for any field. 
this 55 is invalid for any field, so we would eliminate those, those tickets. And the key here is that then what you do is you you get a scanning error rate, which is just the sum of all of the um, invalid values that are that are in your tickets. So that's that's your that's the that's the problem here. So the trick is twofold. It's a bit of a parsing problem because you have to parse out your rules and get these these two ranges or um, for each of the each of the rules. Then you have to go through the tickets, iterate through all of the items of the ticket, uh, you know, each of the numbers of this ticket. And then you have to figure out if one of them is outside of the range, and if it is, then you have to add to your error rate something. So, um, yeah, let, let's just explain how this works. First of all, input parsing was fairly extensive today. Um, so I decided to use kind of a state machine to, to do this. Um, let me just actually open up the input. Um, oh, whoops, uh, uh, reading the input before I started was a really, really good idea, by the way. So that really helped quite significantly. And so basically what you have to notice is that we don't care about this line here or this line, so um, I'm just getting rid of those lines. Uh, the rules is a dictionary of name to um, tuple of low one, high one, and then low two, high two. So, so this is the this is what the the rule map is and where you have a rule name which is just this name here and then one range and then the other range okay and then um, we have two variables to detect whether or not we're in this section or in this section or if both of those are false then we're just in this section um, we're also storing yours and nearby so maybe I should move these down um, so this is going to be your your ticket, the nearby tickets, and each of the tickets are the same same size, which is nice. Okay, so then we go through each line, ignoring the lines that start with your or nearby. The other way to do this is just delete these lines if I was lazy, but I left them in. If the line is empty. Um, then we're either here or we're here. So if we're here, then uh, this this applies, this end rules applies. So if not end rules, um, then we set end rules to true. That way then the next empty line that we see, we set it the end yours to true so, so that we know when to start processing the nearby tickets. So this basically tells us uh, controls like uh, Gate basically gates where we are in the input, and then if we haven't ended the rules, then we parse it as a rule. Um, this is maybe not the prettiest thing that you've ever seen, but basically we're parsing out the rule name, colon, and then your uh, uh, number, dash number, or number, dash number. The nice thing is there there's always two um, ranges, so that's good. Um, anyway, basically then what we do is we set add rules of this, this name, so whatever that is, and then uh, we set it to the tuple of, of these two different ranges, the, the first part and the second part. Let me just clean this up real quick. Um, So yeah, that does the same thing as you can see. Oh, and uh, this is the this 
before I delete it, this is the rules printed. So you can see how that works. Okay, so going back to the input. Um, if it's your ticket, then all I'm doing is parsing out the ticket as a list. It's all comma separated, so just converting them to a to a list. And then if it's nearby, then I do the same thing, except for um, I nearby as a list of lists rather than a single list. So that's the input parsing. It was it was nice. It was a little bit more extensive than previous previous days, and I, I actually liked it. I, I tend to be pretty okay at input parsing. Um, it took me a, a little bit to figure out how to gate it properly, but it worked out. Um, let me just check and see, has anybody else solved? Wow. Well, I am guaranteed at this point, since Easton has solved, that I will not lose any points to Colin. I will gain one at least. So I'm hoping, I'm rooting for literally any of these other people to, to solve very soon. Um, let's see, who might have a chance? John Taylor, maybe? McPanda? I'm rooting for you. All right, back to the explanation. Okay, so once we've scanned and read in the input, um, then what we have to do is actually solve the problem. And uh, that's the, the is issue that we have to solve for part one is that we have to go through all of these things and see if each, for each one of these, can it fit in any of these rules? Okay, so for each of the tickets, um, for each field in the tickets, um, we're going to determine whether or not it's in range um, if it, and by default, we'll say it's not in any of these ranges. And then if we, then we're going to iterate through all of the ranges. So I guess I don't ever really need, I only ever need to look at the values. So the values, um, as you can see, are, th are these guys here. They're the ranges of the, 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 they're the valid ranges. Once you have your, then your, uh, the, for each of the fields, like I said, we're going through and, oh, I think I, maybe I must have gotten lucky here. Um, I don't think this break is necessary because I think there's only ever one invalid field. But anyway, let's go back to the explanation. For each field, um, we're going through each of the two ranges. So this is these are these are a couple of ranges, and then for each of them, for each of the two ranges, there's only two. So this is kind of pretty pointless to have this for loop, but it's fine. It's it's good enough. Um, but I'm pulling out the low and the high, so 40 and 152 in these cases, 161, 969. And if um, if the field value is between those, then we know that it's in a range. So we we've found it. We break out of this loop here, and then we also break out of um, the the ranges loop. And if it um, and because then it will be in a range. If it's not in a range, that's the case that. For example, like the you, we've gone through all of the different ranges, and there's no range for which this value is valid. That's when we will add it to our um, add the field value to s our sum. So that's our scanning error rate. Okay. Um, and let's do low low high just for clarity and that's that's about it that's about it for part one um, pretty reasonable yes technically this is like one two three four 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 loops but this for loop is only ever two items this 
is only ever two items. Or no, I mean this is only however many there however many rules there are, so twenty items. So, you know, this is these two loops are very, very tight. Um and this each ticket's only I don't remember. Like I don't remember how many there are. Let's see. Twenty. So there's only ever twenty twenty fields in a ticket. And there's not that many tickets either. Okay, so that's part one. Yeah, I was just, I was just about to talk about what I did for part two. Um, my part one's pretty ugly. It's but these loops are very tight, so it works. And I figured there's no reason no reason to optimize when there's only ever uh, twenty rules two ranges, and um, 20 fields in each ticket. And so, yeah, moving on to part two. So, by the way, McPanda, I was rooting for you. I was hoping that you would um, beat Colin to the punch because uh, every single person who beats him on on solving is one, is one less point that I have to make up, but... So I was glad that Easton, Easton won. Anyway, um, <laughs> this is all this is all kind of a mess. Let me let me just explain for future YouTube explain what part two is is meaning. So, uh, first thing that we have to do is we have to discard all of the tickets that are invalid. Um, so this honestly took me too way too long to figure out how to do this. Um, so. That was probably the one single blemish of this entire evening was that I was too slow on this section here. Um, but once you've done that, then you uh, basically use the nearby tickets to do inferences um, about which field um, name is corresponds to like the which index. So if we go through this example, like uh, the key here is that, um, uh, so this first one, three, 15, and five, those are all valid for, for the range of class. Um, they are also valid for row and seat, by the way. And this is, I think, what a lot of people are getting tripped up by is that, um, so you can't just uh, narrow it down to class immediately. Um, what you have to do is you have to note that um, 9, 1, and 14 um, are not valid for class. Um, neither is this one. This last one, uh, 18 is not, or, well, okay, hold on. Uh, uh, 14, sorry. 0, 1. Nine. Nine is... Uh, oh, what am I trying to say here? Class is only... Oh, yeah. So so these are not valid for class. Or something, right? Wait, am I going crazy? How did I solve this? Good grief. Um, well, we can, we can run the... Uh, let me let me add a print in here actually and and we can kind of um see what i mean by this so basically what we end up with is that index 0 can just be row index 1 can just can be class or row index 2 can be class row or seat um and so so this can be class row or seat which makes sense from these numbers. Um, index zero can only be row. Um, right, because this... Uh, what's outside of the range? Oh, the five is outside of the range for, for class and the 15 is outside of the range for C. So it can only be a row. And then this one can be the second column can be class or row. Um, 
it cannot be seat because 14 is outside of that range. Basically, the trick is getting this map, uh, getting this mapping of um, which which row, which um, which elements, which which field names can be corresponding to which indices, and then from there. Basically, you can do some inferences of like, well, if 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 something only has one option, then obviously that's the only option. That's the only field. So we just use it. Um, and then we can eliminate row from all the other ones. And then you just keep doing that iteratively. You go through, find, uh, at that point, you would know that one must be class because it can't be row because zero is row. And then you, you, you can use that to, to solve this problem. Um, yeah, yeah, no, this is m making this mapping and then actually using it, um, is definitely non-trivial. Like this is, this whole bit here, um, is, is using, using that. So it's, I can see not, not really knowing how, what to do with this. Um, I think I just kind of got lucky that my intuition made sense and worked. Um, cause I very well could have just screwed it up real bad. Okay. So how do we actually generate this dictionary? Cause this is, this is, like I said, the key. Um, basically what I start out with is a set of all the indices or a dictionary of all the indices to the list of all of the keys that it could be. So it starts out and I'll, I'll just do do this and let me actually add that one back so it starts out as everything being possible so zero could be any of these one could be any of these two could be any of these etc um, and then I determine whether or not the, the thing is invalid the field is invalid and to do this I just go or Rather, whether the ticket is invalid, sorry. If it isn't, um, and the way to do this is just, if any field is invalid, then the entire thing is invalid. Um, anyway, so I'm going through each ticket. In the nearby set, and then going through each field. Field there, F, field. Okay, so we're going through each field of the ticket, and if it is uh, just checking if it's valid using the same logic as above. If it is valid, then we're done. Um, oh, because this is valid and this is invalid. Wow, I'm just bad. At, I'm just bad at reading as normal. Um, and if it is valid. If it's not valid, then we set invalid to true, and we can break here, actually. Um, and uh, then we just continue. Now, um, after we've compiled, after we've eliminated all the invalid tickets, we go through the ticket um, for each field uh, of the ticket. And we have the index of the field and the field value. Um, and I wasn't quite sure if I needed to do this, but I just did it anyway. Um, I, I, I copied a, the possibilities over to a new set. Um, so this is the possibilities for this given index. Um, so for example, um, at the beginning, right, the possibilities for index zero are all three of these, and then we're going through those and, and figuring out which ones are actually not valid. Um, so new possibilities is this, this set. We go through each of the um, possibilities in the possible set, and then we have a range, right? We have a range of low, high, 
low high from the rules. So we just extract that out of the rules. And then um, if it's not in either of these two ranges, if the field value is not in either of these two ranges, then it means that, that this uh, rule name is not a possible rule. So this rule name, this field name, um, really is what it is, uh, is, is not one of the possible field names for this index. And then I'm just resetting possibles i to the new set. Again, likely not efficient, but who cares? Um, it works. And you can kind of see this at work, right? Um, on the first iteration, we notice that uh, um, we 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 don't have we cannot be a we can't be class because it's out of out of bounds. Second iteration, we know that we can't this can't be seat. And then third iteration, we note that one can't be seat either. Okay. So once we've had once we get this possibility set, the trick is actually using it. And what I did was I I made a mapping of index to what I was calling like its true value. Um, so index zero's true value is row because that's the that's its corresponding field name. Where you're iterating through this dictionary of possibles, um, or we're going until the possible set is just empty, right? Um, and each time we, we delete something from the set, so it's fine. And what I'm doing, the reason I did this, by the way, instead of doing a for loop, um, was just because mutating something while you're iterating over it is just messy. So I decided to just compute the len every single time and use use the while loop. The next thing that we have to do is this remove index. This remove index is just keeping track of which element which element of the dictionary has only one thing in its mapping. So in this case, it's just one, right? There's only one thing. Um, and then I go and find it with this for loop. So we go through the, um, uh, the items in possibles. So we have the index, you know, zero, and then the fields, um, fs. And if the number of fields that are possible for this index is one, then we know this is the one that we care about. And so we, we look at the true map, we set in our true map, the index, so index zero in this case, to um, the first element of the possible fields. Possible field is a set, so I had to cast to a list and get the first element, ugly, but effective. And then I set the remove index to the index. This is just saying, this is the one that we need to get rid of. We need to get rid of the zero. Um, and I think that actually, yeah. So it works to delete it beforehand as well. By the way, the possibles for this one are a lot bigger. And I did kind of notice that there's a lot of things that are the same, right? And I. I did process fairly quickly that, oh, there must be some more inferences that need to be made. And it really helped me when I did this. Or, because this, When when you when you print out the items, it becomes fairly apparent that there's one that it has only one item, and then you know it kind of I I kind of just looked at this and was like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. There's no inference that can that there there's an easy inference for this. Okay, so then what do I do? Um, 
after I found the index to remove, I remove it and then go through all the possibilities and remove the thing that we just said this was. So in this case, I remove type from all the other other things. So type can't be in uh, field 14 or 15 or 16. So we're removing that from all those sets. Okay, the last thing to do is we've we've got a true map, which is this guy here, and this works. Um, yeah, I mean, my solution was not exactly simple. It was effective. Um, <laughs> McPanda saying that his solution is simple is maybe simpler. Yeah, I, I would agree. Like, there's a lot simpler ways of doing this, I'm sure. Um, but, you know, I, I think m my philosophy tends to be that whatever is fastest for you to think about is, is the best if you're going for speed. And quite frankly, as far as like readability of this, I think it's pretty good. Like this is, um, you know, of the field to the, of the index to the field it must be um, and then yeah last thing to do is go through all of the fields in the this mapping uh, and their corresponding index so 13 type 15 arrival platform and for the ones that start with departure Um, then I take the index I and look up that index in my ticket and then multiply that to the product. So this is, you know, you have to make sure that you start with one or else you're just going to get zero, which is wrong. Um, so this is the key with product. You have to use the, identi uh, the identity for product. Um, So yeah, that's that's how I solved this. Um, Anthony I writes code with a party of 59. Thank you so much for uh, rating. I really appreciate it. Thanks guys. Um, yeah, we're we're just about finished with with uh, with the explanation for today. Um, Anthony Rice Code, welcome. It is going pretty well for me. Uh, you know, it could be it could be less bad, um, but today was actually a really good day for me. I got um, three ninety nine and two fifty four. So uh, thanks, Epsilon, as well. Hello, welcome back. I satisfied. Nice to see everyone. Sammy Volis, hello. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm basically wrapping up the, dis the explanation of my code, but if anybody has questions, go ahead and um, shoot them in chat. I'll, I'm more than happy to stick around for a little bit longer and, and explain. Ah, la, yeah, you probably want the code. Um, it is not on GitHub, and I don't have any bots set up, so let me, let me just push it, and I will give you a link. There is the code for today. Um, yeah, it was it was interesting. I, I definitely like this problem a lot. It was much much nicer of a problem I, I, uh, than previous days, in my opinion. You know, there was some interesting input parsing that we had to do, um, and I, I I did enjoy part two with doing the inference stuff that was pretty cool um and part one wasn't bad either um it was just you know <laughs> it ended up uh, ended up being fairly ugly for me but it's effective it worked 
So that's, that's all that matters. Yeah, anybody, if anybody has questions, let me know. Um, you know, this is, it's probably not the cleanest or more con most concise code, um, but it, it works. And that's, um, that's good. Let's just time this actually, see how long it takes. So very fast. Input 16 dot text. Even with Python 3, it is um, interesting. It's, uh, it's, uh, it says it's actually maybe faster under Python 3 than with, uh, with running it with, um, oh, maybe I should do not use my shell script. Yeah, so um, this one's a, an instance where using C Python is very, very fast, so. Stutter app, I'm not sure what you are looking for with Bang Advent, but I don't have any fancy stuff on my channel, guys. You have to know that I literally have only been streaming Advent of Code ever. So, um, yeah, the, the Anthony makes a good point. PyPy is probably slow here because it's just, there's no warm up. Like this is such a small problem. Like um, it's only 262 uh, tickets, right? So of course it's not gonna it's not gonna have enough warm up time, and any optimization that it does will honestly be a detriment because it'll have to take time to do the JIT compilation, and it'll have to take time to do the hops into the JITed code. Um, yeah, yeah, it just doesn't and. and yeah, these loops are tight, but they're done in a flash. So, um, all right. Yeah, I think we're I think we're gonna call it there. Thank you all for hopping in. Thanks, Anthony writes code for the raid. And yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna raid somebody else because I, I guess that's the polite thing to do. Um, yeah, like I said, totally new to Twitch. So if if you're new, which I I guess a lot of you are, thank you for thank you for joining. Give me a follow and. You'll get some notification of when I'm uh, going to be streaming, which is every night at 10 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. And if you're watching this on YouTube, give it a thumbs up. Come over and follow me on Twitch. And I'll see you all tomorrow for day 17.